the next introduction that I'd like, I'd like to make uh, is actually someone who I've had the pleasure and the honor of getting to know the last few years uh, through some really excellent collaboration with the Embassy uh, of Ethiopia. Uh, so in that sense, I'm grateful that we can continue the tradition of uh, this cooperation today. Ladies and gentlemen, Ambassador Feseha uh, Ashadom Tesema was born on September 18th, 1954 in Tigray. He completed his high school in the Queen of Sheba Comprehensive High School, Adwa, Ethiopia. He then studied at Aswa Agriculture and Community Development College, where he received his diploma in accounting and agricultural management. Following, he got his Associate Arts and Science degree on May of 1983 from the Moscow Agricultural College, Bachelor of Arts in Public Management from Illinois Central College, and a Diploma of Public International Law from the University of Amsterdam in 1994. He started his diplomatic career as Deputy Permanent Representative of Ethiopia to the United Nations from 1992 until 2002. From 2002 until 2006, he was Minister, Head of Political and Economy Diplomacy at the Embassy of Ethiopia in Washington, D.C., Chargé d'Affaires at the Permanent Mission of the Federal Democratic Republic of Ethiopia to the United Nations, and Ambassador Extraordinary and Philanthropy at the Embassy of Ethiopia, Tel Aviv, from 2006 until 2010 before he then took his current position to be the ambassador to the Federal Republic of G uh, Germany in March of 2011. So you can see really a very rich career having taken him to many continents of the world, uh, serving his country and representing his country in the different capacities that I mentioned. The lecture topic that the ambassador has chosen is the significance of archeological tourism and wealths in nation branding, the case of Ethiopia. Please join me in a very, very warm welcome for His Excellency, Ambassador Tesema. Thank you. Thank you for that introduction. Her Excellency, Ms. Tadelich Delecho, State Minister of Tourism and Culture, Mr. Danfred, our friend, the director of the Institute, Excellencies, invited guests, ladies and gentlemen. It is a great honor and a pleasure for me, for the second time, to share with you, dear participants, the perspective of my country on the contribution of archaeological heritage to nation branding, and consequently its impacts on promoting the tourism industry of Ethiopia. I wish first to extend my appreciation and thanks to our friend, Mr. Mark Dunford, Director of the Institute of Cultural Diplomacy, for giving us this opportunity. Indeed, this is program this program is an opportunity for the Ethiopian delegation that came to participate in the ITV to share with you the current dynamism, especially in the tourism industry of Ethiopia. Ladies and gentlemen, there is no doubt that today the tourism industry is becoming more and more competitive with the introduction of a new communication technology. It is also becoming an important sector of the national economies of countries in terms of employment and capital flow. Indeed, actors in this field, including governments, are looking for a new way of communication to win the race and share the slice of the cake in this sector. Likewise, publicity and image building is getting unprecedented importance and attention attracting is becoming a huge investment. Without any doubt, the stakes attached to image building and national branding is critically important to Ethiopia, a country which is stepping progressively to navigate the unknown waters of globalization. This uphill struggle demands a moment's work to change our image, which has been tarnished for quite some time in the recent past. For us, National branding is not about promotion of the tourist industry per se. It is synchronous in all fields, be it in foreign investment, trade and diplomacy, what have you. In this regard, I believe the option at hand needs to focus on the central issue, which have a far-reaching and broader ramification. In this historic period of transition in the case of many countries in Africa and indeed the rest of the world, national branding will serve as a very powerful instrument for developing sustainable flow of cultural tourism. It is a systemic 
and concerted effort of image building that must be done by promoting the best representative materials, what best the country could offer to the rest of the world. What icon should we choose to make ourselves attractive? Ethiopia is a country of immense heritage, which is equally competitive and global in its nature. Ethiopia is a country of legends and fables, human artifacts, culture, and natural beauty. Ethiopia, which meant burned face for the ancient Greeks, appears several times in the Holy Bible. For some, the biblical phrase, which is engraved at the gate of the newly inaugurated African Union headquarters in Addis Ababa, and I quote, Ethiopia stretches its hand unto the Almighty, and if quote, is an evidence of the closeness to divinity. For the ancient Egyptians, it was not only the source of the Nile, but the Ethiopian mountains were home of their gods. For medieval Europe, it is of the home of the Christian Levitian, Pastor John, fighting infidels in the Orient. There is no doubt Ethiopia is a living thing, seemingly artistically elaborated, exist, exist, extending from 110 meters below sea level to about 4,900 meters mountain peaks. It is a country which is endowed with all types of climate, fauna, and flora. Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. Ethiopia's heritage of archaeological wells is also diverse. It includes both human artifacts and human fossils. In a nutshell, the name Ethiopia associated with Lucy, as the state minister expressed earlier, is the origin of mankind. And subsequently, we are all Ethiopians. I am sure you might have observed Lucy, the precious icon of fossil on earth, is today in the textbooks of each and every country. And indeed, its discovery has brought a new resonance on the image of Ethiopia. Aksum, a small town in northern Ethiopia, is currently in the news after a British archaeologist discovered the gold mines of the legendary Queen of Sheba. Without doubt, Aksum is still keeping its secrets, including the Holy Ark of the Covenant. Our research is still at the early stage. Nevertheless, the relics and the standing obelisks, churches, tombs, coins, and balances are living evidence of this long history. Ladies and gentlemen, I am sure you will agree with me, archaeological heritages, be it in Ethiopia or elsewhere, are opportunities for national branding. They are very powerful in their content, persuasive in their messages. They are there to fill the gaps of knowledge of our collective past. This is the evidence to use. These findings are part of the package of national branding. Their significance is beyond the width and length of the object at hand. They are living books and references of our past, and every one of us is eager to learn more about them. It also indicates the unity of mankind, which contribute to mutual tolerance and intercultural understanding. Ethiopia, with all its rich heritage, has an extraordinary opportunity to be more competitive in the tourism industry. It is a rare chance to be as diverse as Ethiopia, in the real meaning of the word diverse, in history, artifacts, human fossils, culture, and religion. In this perspective, the options are beyond branding one icon or the other. The Ethiopian government is convinced that reducing poverty and sustaining development will have a wider resonance and to achieve this, as time is against us, we will be obliged to run while others are working at the famous Pan-Africanist leader, the late Muami Malimu Julius Nyerere said. Indeed, today, with the achievement of the record, our image is also equally changing. We are already looking the light at the end of the tunnel. We are confident that the backbreaking war against poverty 
can be won. Ethiopia has been growing over 11% in the last seven successive years. Its human development is progressively improving. Indeed, Ethiopia is one of the countries expected to meet the Millennium Development Goals on time. The image of Ethiopia is changing slowly but surely. Current Ethiopia is known for its extraordinary achievement of meeting the MDGs, its double-digit growth. It is a stable country, a beacon of hope and stability in that part of Africa. It is a country vehemently fighting to mitigate the impact of climate change. Slowly but surely, Ethiopia is changing. Distinguished lady, guests, ladies and gentlemen, finally, I would like to take this opportunity to invite each and one of you, not only to visit Ethiopia, but to be on our side in changing the image of Ethiopia wherever you are. I thank you very much.